Are skyrocketing property prices locking Australians out of the dream of home ownership? Today, we are tackling a hot topic here in Australia's property market. Should property be used for shelter? or should it be open to market speculation and private ownership? As both a homeowner and a property investor myself, I understand both sides of the coin. So in today's video, we're gonna have a balanced approach and an open discussion. We will explore together the pros and the cons of the current system that we live in and brainstorm some ideas of how things might change. The media continually seems to be peddling landlords versus tenants. And obviously because the tenants have less wealth, they're the little guy, they're the guy fighting the system to try and get their foot into the housing market. On the flip side, landlords have seen increases in interest rates, insurance costs, costs of trades and materials, prices have gone up across the board for owning a property, whether it's your own home or an investment. There's also really strong competition at the first home buyer's price points. So is property just for shelter or is it for speculation? To be completely fair, property is not just for shelter. If it were, we'd all be living in a basic white box, which the government had issued us, in a location near where our work was. But properties these days are fitted out, they're decked to the hill with technology, with different floor plans, with different areas. For example, if you wanna live beachside, of course that type of area is going to have a premium compared to a house that's five Five kilometers away from the beach. So if property was just for shelter, everyone's going to be fighting for that property on the beach side, which is why those scarce properties go up in value in our capitalistic society. On the flip side, I totally understand that renters are struggling. There's lack of stock and lack of supply on the market. The government doesn't want to provide more rental supply because it's actually quite hard being a landlord. And landlords are being pressed at the moment with increases in interest rates, increases in costs as such as maintenance, insurance, all, the, all those types of bills, land tax is a big topic at the moment. So on both sides of the coin, both investors and renters are being squeezed in different ways. Now, one of the key issues that I'm seeing on the ground is empty properties. I drive past homes because I'm in the car all the time as a buyer's agent. And I see properties that are left, run down, vacant, vandalized, and they're in great locations. In towards hospitals and schools and in near the CBD. And even in the outer ring, there's a lot of trash properties out there. And there's even properties out there that are just sitting vacant because overseas buyers or local buyers for whatever reason have decided to not put the property on the rental market even though they own the home. So one thing I think we should do is have an empty home tax. That's something I think we can sustainably change moving forward. Now it's gonna be hard to police but what I think you need to do is you need to have proof of you living in your own home whether that's rates or water bills or things like that or if it's not your own home and it's an investment, you need to have a contract. You need to have a lease agreement which shows that you are actively renting out that property. This also leads into my next point, which is the rise in short-term rental accommodation. Because of the profitability in short-term accommodation, people are deciding to take their homes off the long-term rental market and move it into the short-term rental market. Now, Emily and I are undertaking a raise and build project at the moment, and we're really excited to be bringing that series here to YouTube in the next few months and share with you guys the entire journey, all those costs, even though some of the materials and labor costs are much higher than we expected, we're going to be breaking all the numbers down for you on that project. But while we've been doing our major renovation project on the south side of Brisbane, we've been having to find alternate accommodation. Now, we originally tried to get into the rental market. We looked at houses around the six to $800 per week mark, and we put in several applications and were knocked back, even with our strong financial position. So a lot of people are struggling to find supply of properties and having to move further away where there is more supply and maybe these new housing and land estates. Because Emily and I weren't able to secure suitable accommodation for ourselves while we're doing our renovation project, we actually moved into my mother-in-law's, which is this studio right here. And we lived in this property for about six months. And recently we've been living in an Airbnb for just coming up to about 10 to 12 weeks now. Now the Airbnb is very expensive. We're paying roughly 12 to $1,300 per week for rental accommodation on the south side of Brisbane in a suburb called Morningside. It's a two bedroom home on roughly a 405 square meter block. 
Now, if that property was on the long-term rental market, it would probably rent for around six to $700 per week. But on the short-term rental market, with some Ikea furniture and fitted out and electricity and internet and all those things paid for you, it's roughly around twelve to $1,300 per week for us to rent that place. Because it's so lucrative for these owners to do this short-term rental accommodation, that's why they're putting it on the Airbnb and on the booking.com and on those short-term rental markets. For us, it was the right decision to get into an Airbnb. We needed to move out of my mother-in-law's place and we wanted to be closer to our renovations. So moving over to Morningside made sense for us. And even though it's very expensive, it was the right decision for us at this point in time. Now, how can the government address these issues? We're seeing in areas like Byron Bay that they're putting caps on how long homeowners can rent their property out on the short-term rental market. For example, 90 nights each year. So they can only rent the property out for a quarter of the year on the short-term market. And this is to encourage owners to put their property on the long-term rental market. In Brisbane, for example, we've seen a tax on short-term rental properties where the local council is trying to charge higher rates and fees to property owners that are putting their property on that short-term market. I don't think these things are going to disincentivize property owners who do want to take on this short-term business essentially and run a mini hotel or an Airbnb because there's too much money in it. The business economics aren't changing based on these daily caps or based on these fees that the councils are charging. But this is a really tough one, but I don't really see any more of those Airbnb properties transitioning back to long-term rentals anytime soon. Now let's talk about government intervention. There's an argument out there, I hear it all the time on some ABC News articles uh, and on, on YouTube as well, where people are saying property is a basic human right. And this goes back to what we said at the start, that not two properties are the same. And if prop every property was the same and it was government mandated, things could be a lot worse. It's almost dystopian environment if we were to live like that, where the government told people where they could live and what property you could have and you had to line up and get on a government list. I think that would actually be a far worse situation than letting the private market and mum and dad homeowners actually buy, own and rent out properties. The other option in the middle, which is happening overseas in America, is these massive syndicates and these massive companies like BlackRock buying up entire suburbs and doing the buy, build and rent schemes. So they're building these properties and they're renting them en masse. If we saw corporate companies come into Australia and do this at, at a large scale, it could be a lot worse for renters because you would be at the beck and call of an entire corporation rather than dealing one-on-one -on -one with mum and dad property investors. So I don't see that government intervention or those major corporations coming in and changing the property situation massively. Now, the biggest solution to all of this, dealing with investors versus homeowners, talking about Airbnb and short-term accommodation and dealing with government intervention and corporations, in my opinion, the biggest solution is to create more supply. The problem is time and materials are so expensive here in Australia. Labor costs have increased dramatically. There's not enough trades on the ground who are working in the industry to keep up with the demand. And we're not seeing development applications get passed by local councils, get passed by the state government for major projects or the federal government backing development enough for there to be enough supply across Australia to actually meet the demand. We've also got this overseas migration issue and in Southeast Queensland, we're seeing interstate migration because you know, Brisbane's the place to live. So with that growing demand, both overseas and interstate in Southeast Queensland's example, we need more supply to address the demand. Now, I don't like the supply that's coming onto the market. They're all cookie cutter blocks. They're making houses smaller and smaller and making the blocks smaller and smaller. But this does create more livable space for people and does keep costs down. But as a homeowner and investor, that's not the type of stock I'm wanting to buy. And so it's the established stock that's in good areas and on good land sizes and with the right floor plans and enough space for people to live in, these types of properties are driving up in price significantly because all of this new supply and new stock is cookie cutter, small land sizes and small houses and typically single story. Now we need sustainable housing solutions, but there's so many complexities that come about when we're talking about the Australian market. We absolutely have the land, but everyone wants to be along the coastline. Not many people want to live inland where there is a lot of land supply. All of our major cities sit along the coastline on the east and we've got Perth out in the west. 
which is essentially its own place because it's so far away. Sorry, guys in Perth. <laughs> And because the demand is localized in these cities and major metro locations, these areas are going to grow in density. So that's the other thing we could see is a European feel start coming to our cities. Melbourne's already there, and that's why it's got a lower median price point than Brisbane, for example. Brisbane prices at a median level are actually higher than Melbourne, but that's because Brisbane's got a far greater mix of houses relative to units and townhouses, whereas Melbourne has far more townhouses and units relative to their housing supply. So in Brisbane, for example, we could see a major uptick in major sky rise buildings with huge apartments in the areas like Wollongabba, West End, Highgate Hill, in towards the CBD, Newstead, Tenerife. There's lots of areas where they could build more towers and create more supply that way by going up. I don't think we should villainize property investors or mum and dad investors for being in the property market. Without these mum and dad property investors, which make up roughly 90% of the rental supply here in Australia, there would wouldn't be rental supply. Now, Emily and I are even looking to sell one of our investment properties to pay for our own major renovation project. And that is going to pull a property off the Brisbane market and put it into either homeowner's hands or back onto the rental market, depending on who buys the property. Now, in that case, the current property is rented for only $480 per week, but market rent would be around $650 per week. So rental prices have increased significantly. There are some investors that are selling out and using those funds elsewhere. And there is not enough supply at this point in time. And I don't see a pipeline of supply in the future. I'd love to hear ideas on how we could change or fix things to improve Australia's property market, both for investors and for renters. If you're interested in buying a property here in Southeast Queensland, whether it's your own home or an investment property, head over to purposeproperty.com.au. And if you want to see some recent client purchases, click this playlist over here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.